right? So the good news is if you want to be Neil Armstrong on the moon, you have the capacity for it. If you want to be Mother Teresa, you have the capacity for it. But you can't have the capacity for that without having the capacity for all the stuff that we don't like also. I actually struggle deeply with knowing like, what do I like? It's not about how much you love it. It's about prioritizing things so that it works better. Welcome to another episode of Rich in Relationship. And today I'm talking to Caleb Nelson from Naked Sunday. I love that name. Nothing like a Naked Sunday. And we're going to talk about his system, his perspective, his abstraction on how to have happiness in a relationship. It's called the Nexus of Happiness. I love that name. How are you today, Caleb? Rich, I'm doing great. I'm just grateful to be here, man. This is this is awesome. It's great to see you again. I, I like Caleb and I met online, like so many people meet these days, and I just totally vibed on him from the beginning. I think we're going to have a lot of fun together. I agree. So the question I'm going to ask you is the question I ask everybody in the beginning of the show, which is how did your, just in case you guys haven't figured it out, by the way, Caleb does a lot of relationship work like I do. How did your heart lead you to do this work, Caleb? Well, I had hit a wall and uh, probably the, the first initial spot was my dad almost died. And looking into his eyes, there's a, and this is kind of a question that I ask a lot of people now, who's holding your hand on your deathbed? And st sitting there in the hospital room, thank God he's still alive. But looking at him, I had this mirror of myself and be like, this is, I'm not living up to my potential. Now, this was six, seven years ago, but that it's like that inception moment. Like it was dropped in my head and I couldn't unsee it. Didn't know where it was going to take me. But uh, during that journey, I still had a gym at the time. And uh, around the pandemic, I was kind of starting to feel like I was, I knew I was ready to move on from the brick and mortar and all that stuff. And I was still feeling called to do something much, much more, uh, which then amidst that time, I was already doing something called Naked Sunday as my brand <laughs> leads in so generously for me. <laughs> and um, a lot of it just came down to sitting alone with myself and learning how to build a better relationship with myself and asking myself what I wanted to do with my life and the impact I wanted to lead. So it really just came from that, just being, just sitting alone with my thoughts and being naked. Who's holding your hand at your deathbed? That is a great question. You know, maybe I'm going to change the opening for the show. Please do. That's. Uh, you want to know who's holding your hand at your dad? And I just, I mean, I'm, I'm being like a little mocking of it, but I also want to be really clear that this is a really important question. It's. I actually like it better than what are people going to say at your funeral. I like it a lot more because. I mean, they have those obit write your own obituary things and what's on your tombstone and what are they going to say like. But that's all about like I built this and that 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 yeah. like it's so. It's so like accomplishment driven as opposed to who are the people you impacted and they mentioned earlier, like what's my system? I, I actually don't have a system. I have a framework in my head. I told this to a, a prospective client the other day. I was, I was just like, I'm going to be straight up with you. I have zero plan going into every conversation we have. All I am thinking about is I want to treat you like a, you're a friend. We're just hanging out. We're talking. I'm going to hold space and I want you to look and feel awesome. What I've found from that, everybody already has their own system in their head and they know what happiness is to them. I'm just holding space for them to play with it. And I, I, ironically, my I just presented, presented if you want to call it that, I, I officiated my baby brother's wedding uh, last week uh, from when we're recording this. And uh, I talked a little bit about this concept that I sit with, this the window in the mirror and I believe we're all each other's mirror in some way, shape or form. We're showing, they're showing us something about ourselves. For sure. Okay? And I think that the, that the profound, most profound piece about who's holding your hand on your deathbed is, especially when I think about, for me, like, I hope it, I hope it's my significant other, this person that I've built a life with, all the accomplishments and the things that we'd say, yeah, written on my tombstone or in my obit, those things are already done. Like, that's cool. But that was as a byproduct of me putting this relationship and these values that are reflected back at me in this person. All that stuff's just a byproduct. That's the, that's the ancillary stuff. This is the core. Just keep putting your attention to the right people and everything else will take care of itself as 
ambiguous that might feel and as scary as that sometimes feels we all I, I think we all deep down are like yeah just do right by the people that you love that's it and um that's that's kind of where i've operated for my life and that's made a lot of made a much better, bigger difference for me and for those of us who are listening the idea that the world is our mirror or that other people are are, are our mirror <clears throat> maybe new or even scary like if I'm looking at Adolf Hitler, how is he my mirror? And the fact is, the, or, the, or the way, not the fact, the way that I like to frame this so that people can get it is as human beings, right? Two things. First, as human beings, we have the capacity to do anything that any other human being has done, right? So the good news is if you want to be Neil Armstrong and go to the moon, you have the capacity for it. Or if you want to be Mother Teresa, you know, you have the capacity for it. But you can't have the capacity for that without having the capacity for all the stuff that we don't like also. Uh, you know, you have the capacity to be a serial killer. You have the capacity to be, you know, do you want to be? No. Are you going to engage in it? I sure hope not, right? And coming with that capacity also is we're, we're constantly judging or maybe a better way to put it is evaluating, you know, what's in front of us, right? Like when we walk, when we're walking down the street, we're evaluating, is there a tripping point is there a hole you know and when we're having relationships with other people we're doing that also but with, with other people there isn't a clear hole or tripping point there's only our assessment of what their behavior looks like and all of that comes from inside of us is the point that's like the point that i'm getting to here is it comes from inside of us so if I, when i see caleb and i think man this guy is so awesome you know, what I'm really recognizing is I can only recognize the awesomeness that I have in me, right? Because I can't recognize it as someone else if it isn't in me. So Caleb becomes a reflection of my own awesomeness. So I got to tell you, Caleb, you have some unique qualities that I haven't developed yet. We'll just put it like that. I'm not going to say I don't have the capacity for it. But, and I don't know if it's going to be easy for me to develop. But the point is that we can only see in others something that we already have. And that's the idea of that everyone is our mirror. And for some people, this is a little hard to grasp because they don't like what they see. So tell us more in turn, actually from that, how do you get to the nexus of happiness? So as I was pivoting and I think. I hate that. that word. I, yeah, I, I want you to stop funny. pivoting. Uh, as I pivoting. was <laughs> reflecting and, and enjoying then evolution, shall we say, into the next phase of my life and just taking what I was already working on in this, ironically, this training ground of that space and now removing, I, I used to own a CrossFit gym before I then disaffiliated and then whatever, they talk a lot about being in the box. As I was so, like removing the box in many ways and expanding like what the core concept that I had been developing underneath it, not the changing the external physical stuff is now saying like, what's the intrinsic piece? I, I enjoy focusing on this joy, this happiness, whatever we want to call it. Well, I was just sitting there in this space and I started asking myself for the rest of my life, like, what do I want to be doing? What do I care about? What do I actually enjoy? Mm. And we just talked about this right before, like I actually struggled deeply with knowing like, what do I like? What actually brings me joy in my day to day? And more often than that, I was feeling really guilty about that. I love super, watching movies. super important question. Like seventy percent of all Americans, I don't know about people in the world, hate their job. Yeah, and I even had resentment towards it, but that was my own problem. I got myself into a lot of those things, and and so as I started to to come back to this, and I was also on this weight loss journey, and and I think the blessing that was the the pandemic is that I've called it the great fast, and I've done like seven day water fast, and every single one of them has illuminated something that I needed to see, where I took away all the the excess. And for me, without the the excess of a building and and having ex extra staff and extra things to try to cloud, like I have to do this and like all this have to should to should like those kinds of words were clouding my like the voice that was inside of me saying, "Where do you need to go?" And I I first aligned my body, and I was like, "Well." I need to fall back in love with taking care of myself mm. in that I need to fall back in love with the work I'm doing, but more than anything, I also needed, I was like, what's, what's driving this. And as I'm sitting there, butt naked on my couch, don't worry, I've washed it and cleaned it. Everybody we're good. We're safe. Everything's cool. No skid marks. And no skid marks. We're good. <laughs> I'm, I'm there dealing with some dark thoughts about myself. Just truly, I just didn't like me. 
And I look over, I don't know what compelled me, I look over at my wife and I just ask the question, well, why does she love me? And I rattled off all this stuff. I was like, I need to invest more energy into that. Mm -hmm. And I had not been putting my relationships first. I would, the, the relationships that truly like pull me up to what I, what I aspire to be. Like when my wife gives me a compliment, like a week or two ago, she, she listened to the, the, the officiating. She's like, I get chills when I, I listen to you speak. I didn't know she felt that way about me. And that means a lot. That's so kind of, sweet. It really like, it touched yeah. me. I was like crying. And this is like the middle of the night. Just like my wife thinks this way about me. And she's, she she holds me to account. She really does, and, and vice versa. And so as I sat back to it, and I, and I started doing my little checklist of like, how do I enjoy my day? When do I feel like I had a great day? When do I feel like I'm really uplifting and I felt like I did a good job? It always came down to three things. Number one, I, I spent time with myself, self-care, whether it's physical, mm -hmm. mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever, whatever, however it manifests itself. I took, I helped somebody. I was of service to others. Mm -hmm. It was like, and it was just something that I really enjoyed to do. I gave, and it was meaningful work. And the final thing was, it was always like, I spent some quality time with my loved ones. So there's, I do a boys night every Wednesday with my, my best friends. And we just go out and have a meal or it's with my wife, like hanging out on the couch, watching a movie with our dog. Those were the things. Whenever I hit those three checkpoints, my day was a 10 out of 10. And I'm like, well, Duh. Like if I do those three things, it leads towards the external thing of if people want to just call it like the very base primal things of look better naked, more money in your bank account, having fun doing the work you're doing when you want to do it, and quality time with the people you love. And mm -hmm. you want to get real crass with it, more sex. Like yeah, it's well, that kind of stuff. But the ecosystem behind it of building these habits and these this frame that we'll call it this framework that allows that type of love to prosper and develop and then that's that's where the nexus of happiness came. It was like, how do you get those three things enough quality time in each of those three things, and where did that overlap? All right, so we're going to do another episode called "More Sex for Guys," but that's that's another episode. Today I can do that one all day. <laughs> today we're going to stay with nexus of happiness. Um, and so, what I it's really interesting when I was working in the pandemic, I would get these couples who were really stressed, and they would come to me and they'd be like, "Oh, Rich, like where we we're just." trying to figure out how to work, you know, and they have two kids and if, like taking care of themselves, forget about it. Right. And uh, the relationship, ha, there's no room for that. But interestingly, every time it worked, and this is to back up your nexus of happiness, what worked every time was first when they made time to take care of themselves, to have some gym time or meditation and prayer or whatever, you know, habits they needed to get back into their life that had sort of crumbled because of the pandemic. Uh, that helped so much because their battery was close to fully charged or fully charged. And when their battery is charged, the next thing that worked for them was to take time with each other. Because what they figured out was there's a synergy that happened when the two of them planned together that didn't happen when they were sort of parallel, lifing their way, dealing with the kids and everything else. So once they, they take care of themselves, get some time together. And then next would be the kids and work would come last. And interestingly, when they get to work, they would be so much more efficient and get so much more done once they had taken care of themselves, taken care of their relationship, and they knew their kids were managed. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it absolutely turned things around. That's like com in complete alignment with your nexus of happiness. I love it. And they, I didn't give that to them, by the way. They would just, I mean, I'm like you, I'm like, they have the answers. They would discover this in the process. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's a great... Uh, effective frame that will apply to 99.9% .9 of all human beings. I will never say everyone. Well, yeah, there's, there's never anything. There's and I will rarely stuff. say never, <laughs> which I just did. A thousand percent with you. <laughs> and what's interesting is I actually had a moment where I first realized putting more energy into, into my, my marriage was actually profitable, where it was with the gym. We were going through like a bad sales season, if we will. And, um, I was doing all the mechanical stuff, like, you know, do your con connections and reach outs and all the other blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Like what you've been taught to do in business, very masculine, hard energy. Mm -hmm. And goal did, oriented. Goal oriented. Yeah. And what I was realizing is that numbers were not getting any better. They're actually getting worse. And I was getting more friction at home. And we were just kind of at, you know, at each other's throats because, you know, we're just like, we were tired. We were frustrated. And really, I was just frustrated with myself. Um, and I don't know what dawned upon me, but 
I was like, I, I got to tighten this up. I, I tell all my clients to look look at the bigger picture when you're looking at your health or whatever it was. And that's at that time. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have to walk the walk here. And I decided to put more energy into that. We had a couple of big conversations and, and whatnot, and just like reconnected. And lo and behold, when I wandered into work the next day, I was a little bit happier because I felt like my cup was full and my, my wife had my back and we were on the same page. I was a little more joyous when I talked to the first you know, mm-hmm. one of my already clients. And, and then I was just, it, it started to snowball into this. By the, by the time I got to like a sales room, I was just like, I'm happy as a clam. I'm good either way. But with that confidence, that baseline stability within myself, I was willing to ask the hard questions and hold the space for the conversation that really needed to happen for that other person to feel confident enough to make the decision to invest in the space that we were in, like that, this health space, or whatever you want to call this transformation center. And numbers went up. It's, it's crazy because it feels like I'm going to go left to go right, but it, it's a real thing. And, and people got to zoom out because they don't realize that they're thinking too myopically about the problem. I will be happy when I have the money. Nope. I have yet to see that. And, you know, put more energy into that. I have a friend, he's down, he's a life coach down in, um, in Florida. And uh, he had this uh, reflection after a call, or like a group call we were on. He's like, love is productive. From a practical standpoint, the goal oriented thing, if you put your energy into that love, it's going to pay off big dividends. Yeah. And I, I just want to draw our listeners attention to something, you know, something my clients come up against a lot when I, we talk about self first, relationship second, and uh, children work come out or whatever else comes after that, uh, or, or relationships second is probably a better way to put it because it isn't just your partnership, though that's like their important one. What they come up against is, well, but I, I love my children just as much as my partner. You know, and the, the distinction here is we're not making a distinction about how much you love something. You may love your work more than your marriage, by the way. And that's okay if that's what's coming up to you. But you may love your wife more than you love taking care of yourself. You may, it's not about how much you love it. It's about prioritizing things so that it works better. It's about, a pri- pri- and we don't prioritize the, always based on love. Sometimes we prioritize on what's going to work. You know, and because we love people, we want things to work better. And so I, I love that. And what that means is putting yourself first is a selfish act that's going to enhance every other relationship. And it doesn't mean that you're going to always put yourself first. It means you're going to take care of yourself first. Actually, I'm going to share a personal story. Would that be okay? Please do. Because yeah. this brought something up for me. Um, today, actually this week, I just came back from taking care of my mother for a week, having her knee replaced, right? And uh, let me tell you. That is some work, some personal, a lot of personal work. There. I, I, there was a lot of things that I worked out about my mother that I hadn't worked out. And you would think at my age, we have like this perfect freaking relationship, right? But no, this is a never ending mission. So my wife is going to a, an event. She's gone actually today to an event. And she asked me last night, she said, do you want to come to this horse show? And I said, if I'm really honest, no, I don't want to go to the horse show. Does that mean that I'm not going to go? No, I'm going to come because my relationship with you is really important. You know, and, and so, again, it's this thing of uh, pri- priorities. As much as I want to, after spending a week taking care of my mom, I just want to kind of laze around the house, and butt naked on my couch, right, or whatever. It's a lot harder because we have a lot of people here who don't want to see that. <laughs> I mean, like my daughters, for example, you know, but um, as much as I'd like to be doing that, you know, I've, I've taken care of myself and I need to, for her, having that time together at the horse show is about nurturing the relationship. And so that's a priority. And, and, I, and I am going to show up and I will show up with gratitude and even a positive attitude. And the distinction here is she's not making me do it. I'm saying this for myself. Audience, I'm saying this for myself. <laughs> she's not making me do it. I'm choosing to do it because I want to continue to invest in the relationship. Well, I think what you're saying there is really empowering too. the choice, knowing I am taking ownership of that. But I wouldn't go so far as to say, you know, you talked about being selfish, but it's being selfish to be selfless. Yeah. And also in that it's knowing, well, did you, did you even build up a reservoir to pull from? Did, is your piggy bank, your relational capital, whatever you want to call it in whatever, or actual piggy bank financially, or your self-care piggy bank or your relational capital piggy bank, 
to pull from and sometimes saying, hey, I, I can spare the hour or the day for this because I understand that. And then also understanding where you're going to make it back up if you do go into a deficit. But it's those proactive and very conscious decisions, not reactive behaviors that allow us to come back to center and feel more grounded, more consistently. As we're talking about being selfish, it allows you to be selfless. It allows you to make these conscious, more meaningful decisions with the people you love and show up consistently well for them. And that's sometimes it's hard because it's a long term kindness. So actually, I want to. Even though we're near the end, I'm going to stretch the audience. We're going to stretch this out. So if you're on the treadmill, you may need to stay on a little longer. I want to ask you a really important question. I think this is important for everyone. In those moments where we're having a contradiction, like I was talking about, between uh, kind of what we want for ourselves, what we want for our relationship, or when that thing starts to show up as a demand, even though it's a request. How do you, 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 you've talked a lot about getting enough distance so that you can see what's going on there. And I'm going to tell you, honestly, I, I needed to, you know, meditate on this and pray about it. And I, I, I hadn't actually talked to anyone about it. Sometimes I need to talk to other people about these things to get the distance that I need. So what are the, you know, what are the tools that you would offer people so that they can have that kind of perspective on their relationship so that when something kind of catches them on the side, you know, that they process it and find the right place for it in their lives instead of being uh, reactive. Yeah. Great question. Um, if I have enough time to really just like pull myself away, I would go back to that very question of who's holding your hand on your deathbed. That usually calibrates most things for me because it, it's the start with the end in mind idea. If I have less time to process, I, I used to do this to start off like classes at the gym, but I still do it to this day. I call it my mindful moment. And uh, at the end of it, I think I, I improve my odds for decision-making. But uh, within it, just do a, a minute, as much gratitude as possible. Mm. Am, am gap. That's my fitness background. How I'm programming am gap. So you just list off all the things you're grateful for. Because usually if we're feeling reactive, we don't feel like we have enough. Like we, don't, we're, we are not enough in that moment. And by doing that gratitude exercise and just all of a sudden you're like, oh, I got this laundry list of all these great things. It just takes that edge off in a healthy way as opposed to, you know, where most people would just lean on a, having a drink to take the edge off. Now we're just using something that's really positive to say, let me take stock in my life. Where am I at? And brings that reactive, anxious energy down just a touch to think clearer. You're not going to be perfect. So that, that helped just clarify that everybody, you're not going to make a perfect decision, but you're going to make a better decision. And then what I would say after that is like, what's the one thing I'm going to do or how can I how can I uh, make this a positive situation? And just asking those, that question after that, I've found I make a better decision. Will you mess up? Okay, cool. But it's more about you took a moment to consciously take a breath. I would just like to point out that when your wife asks you, would you like to come and you say no, that might not be the ideal answer for that moment. <laughs> like, just so you know, but I did get the opportunity to clean it up. You know, um, and, and we've been around each other long enough so that she understood what was happening there. Uh, yeah, so that's a great answer. Really lucid. I love, I love uh, the mindful moment. I love gratitude. You know, the, the realizing that there really is enough, uh, that, that there's more than enough, um, and that there's space for this. Really, really good stuff. All right. And now, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to ask you that. You know, people want, people might want to know you besides me. As much as I want to keep you all to myself, how can it. people find you? Uh, well, you can go to my website. It's nakedsunday.coach. I have a podcast called Naked Sunday. So if you go to anchor.fm backslash Naked Sunday, I'm on Anchor and Spotify, or pardon, um, what's it called? Spotify and Apple. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn under Caleb Nelson. I'm on Facebook. My uh, Instagram is, and this really drives me nuts because it wasn't available just like straight up, but it's at underscore naked underscore sunday underscore same thing on tiktok my personal um what's it called instagram is at lev in real life because my nickname is lev uh you can message me on any of those and things we can hang <laughs> my assistant camille i'm going to tell her she's got to listen to this podcast so that she can get all of that and yeah. make sure it's included in the notes for the podcast <laughs> and the video blog uh, and so okay. if you're listening to this on the podcast by the way we run it also as a video blog on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you just want to listen to it while you're driving, 
this podcast shows up on Anchor and Spotify and Google and Apple and like it's all over the place. So uh, there are lots of ways to tap into this. Caleb, what is the legacy you want to leave behind? Uh. I'm working on not having a joking tone about it because every time I do, I feel like I'm a beauty pageant queen from this congeniality, but my hope in helping people really be honest and discover and live in alignment in a way that allows them to be happy is that we can somehow bring about not only peace within themselves, but trickle that out into world peace as well. So that's, if that could be my legacy and contributing in one very small way, I would hope that that could be that. I love the way you went to world peace. That well, comes that's like the ultimate miscongeniality, is it? Uh, you know, it's it's. Well, that's part of why I'm like I I was on somebody else's podcast yesterday with a friend of mine. I said the same thing. I'm like, why? Why is it even said as a joke? It just seems so impossible. But you know, I found when we feel at peace with ourselves, you don't you don't get angry at other people. And that mirror piece, like I see me in you. Why would I harm you? And it's my hope that we can bring that well, kind of and it's, it's interesting because when you think about when i think about world peace i don't know about everybody else when i think about world peace i don't know my concept of world peace i don't think is one we really want you know it's, it's, it's really boring so you know maybe world peace is more like well there's still differences and there's still things to work out but we do it in a way that's not angry <laughs> yeah i mean there's gonna be friction like that's that's this utopian thing is a, i think a ridiculous idea because everybody's idea of utopia let alone their idea of happiness is different but it's the if we think of peace as more of an acceptance without judgment without that like anger and i want to tear you down piece is mm -hmm. oh this is you you're doing you you're not harming somebody else cool go live your best life not just as like some catchphrase but yeah go live your best life I think it's an interesting premise and, and nice. we might have this course within that that's that's healthy. Nice. Perfect way to end the show. Thank you so much for coming, Caleb. We're going to have to do this again somewhere, somehow. Absolutely, my friend. Thank you for having me.